we are to graph the linear equation. So I could change this equation to slope intercept form and then graph it. Or I can use an xy chart. I'm going to use an xy chart because I will be using slope intercept form on a later problem. Whenever I use the chart, I like to focus on the intercepts. When y is 0, we'll find out what the x-intercept is. Start with your original equation. Put in a 0 for y. And we see that x is equal to a negative 3. So we put that in our chart. This gives us our first ordered pair. Then when x is 0, this will tell us the y-intercept. Put this in our chart. We have two ordered pairs. I'm going to find a third ordered pair. That is, I'll pick a value for x and see what y is. So let's say x is 1. So we'll put 8 in our chart. So now I have three ordered pairs, negative 3, comma, 0. No up or down, just over 3. 0, comma, 6. No back and forth, just up 6. And 1, comma, 8. That's over 1 and up 8. Here's 7. So I suppose 8 would be right about there. Again, in order to graph this equation, I'll go ahead and use the xy chart. First, I'll see what happens when y is 0. we get x is 0. Usually with the xy chart, I start out with y is 0 and solve for x, and then I put x is 0 and solve for y. But I'm going to get another 0 for y if I put in a 0 for x. You can look at your original equation and verify that. So I'll pick a different value when x is 1. We get y is 5. And I'll pick a third value to identify the third point. If I say x is negative 1, it looks like this will clean up pretty easily.
so we put a negative 5 in our chart. Now we have three ordered pairs, 0, 0, or the origin, 1, 5 over 1, up 5, negative 1, negative 5, back 1, down 5. We can draw our line. So we graphed all solutions to the original equation. Now with this one, we're to graph using the slope and y-intercept. So we'll rearrange this equation to slope-intercept form. That is y equals mx plus b. So we'll need to get y all by itself with our original equation. First we'll get rid of x. I'm going to put the x term first. That's positive 15. Now you have to get rid of the 3. So you end up with y is equal. I can write this as a negative 1 third x. and this simplifies to a 5. So now we have our equation in slope-intercept form. When x is 0, this goes away, and we have y equals 5. So when x is 0, y is 5. And the slope is negative 1 third. So that's down 1 over 3, down 1 over 3, I like to do it twice just so it's easier to draw my line. So we graph the equation using slope and y-intercept. With this one, we're asked explicitly for the x and y-intercepts. Then we're to graph it. So I'll use an x-y chart. First for the x-intercept, when y is 0. We get x is negative 6, put that in our chart. Now when x is 0, we'll find the y-intercept. We'll put this in our chart. So we have the intercepts. We can go ahead and graph these. When x is negative 6, y is 0. Negative 6, y is 0. When x is 0, y is negative 2. 0, down 2. And I could draw the line. I'm going to pick one more value just to make sure I did my algebra right. Um, looks like when x is a negative 3, it's going to land on the line. So let's see. So again, we'll try x is negative 3. we get y is negative 1. So over 3, down 1.
Here we're to find the intercepts, but we don't need to graph it. I'll still use an XY chart just to organize my thinking. So when y is 0, we'll find the x-intercept. We get x is 2. So here's our x-intercept. For the y-intercept, x is 0. This all becomes 0, and we simply have so I'll put that in the chart. So the x-intercept is 2 comma 0 and the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 6. Here we're to find the slope of the line. We're given two points. We'll need the formula for slope. Whenever I use this formula, I like to label these values. So here's x sub 1 and y sub 1, then x sub 2 and y sub 2. So I'll start with just the fraction bar and the two minuses. And now I'll plug in the values. y sub 2 goes right here. x sub 2 goes down here. You can see y sub 1 is up here. Here's our y sub 1, negative 8. And then x sub 1 is down here, negative 6. My preference is to clean this up when I have two signs in front of a number. So treating the numerator separately, we end up with 3. The denominator gives us a 9, and this can be simplified. So the slope that goes through the points is 1 -third. Again, we're to find the slope that goes through these two points. y sub 2, x sub 2, y sub 1, x sub 1. I'll clean up the numerator. The denominator, 4 minus 4, is 0. I don't have to go any further. 0 in the denominator is not allowed in mathematics. We don't know what the value of this is. So we say the slope is undefined. Sometimes they'll say there's no slope. I'm going to say it's undefined. So y sub 2, x sub 2, 
y sub 1, x sub 1. The numerator gives us 0, the denominator negative 6, 0 over anything is 0. So the slope is 0. Here we just need to graph the line. It goes through 0, 6. It has a slope of 1 fifth. So 0, 6, no back and forth, just up 6, put a dot. Our slope is 1, rise 1, run 5. So that's up 1, over 5. Normally I would keep going, but I'll be well off of the graph. I'd like to put another point on here. Notice that a negative 1 over a negative 5 this would clean up to a positive one-fifth. So to stay on the graph, I can go down one and back five. You don't have to put this third point, but I like to have three points to draw the line. And finally, zero five. No back and forth, just up five. The slope is negative five. If you want to see this as a fraction, you just put it over a 1. So that's down 5 over 1, down 5 over 1, and you can draw a line. There's the solution.